Welcome to another edition of the News Review. In this edition, the U.S. has authorized some foreign investment in northern Syria in areas that are not controlled by the government. The Treasury Department approved activities in 12 sectors, including agriculture and finance. However, it made it clear that it will not permit any transactions with the government or those designated under U.S. sanctions. Washington reiterated that it has no intention of lifting sanctions on Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The United States invaded Syria under the pretext of fighting Daesh terrorists in 2019, and U.S. forces still occupy parts of northern Syria. So far, Washington has refused to withdraw its forces, despite repeated calls from Damascus. To discuss that further, we're joined by our correspondent in Damascus, Muhammad Ali, and also Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, who's joining us live from Sydney. Let's begin with Muhammad Ali. Tell us more. This is just shocking news to understand that a foreign country is making investment in another country in parts that is not controlled by the government. What does that mean? Yes, definitely it is shocking, but. I don't think it's surprising for the uh, Syrian government or the Syrian people after all uh, what, uh, what the United States has been doing uh, for years inside Syria illegally. Uh, we know that uh, the U.S. Uh, Treasury Department approved uh, foreign investments uh, in 12 sectors in northern Syria in areas not controlled by the Syrian government, but uh, actually controlled by the so-called Syria's democratic uh, forces over there. Now, uh, this is not a surprise. Uh, this is... Uh, part of a strategy that the United States is carrying out, perhaps, uh, to strengthen its positions and presence inside Syria, its illegal presence uh, over here. Uh, until this moment, uh, there is uh, no official uh, response from the Syrian government regarding uh, this uh, uh, decision by the uh, United States. Uh, uh, however, it's very important to say that previous uh, statements by Syrian officials, whenever there was attacks and strikes by the so-called U.S. coalition that killed civilians and destroyed the infrastructure in Syria, officials here always uh, say that the U.S. presence inside Syria is an occupation, it is illegal, and it is actually in direct support of the uh, Daesh terrorists inside Syria. Because what the United States said uh, is that this decision is, des is designed to uh, create kind of economic uh, stabilization in that area to defeat Daesh. But on the ground, everything the U.S. has been doing since 2014 illegally in Syria is in support, actually, of, of Daesh here. Interesting point you mentioned there. Let's uh, bring in Mr. Tim Anderson. The United States invaded Syria in the name of fighting terrorism. Now it is actually playing in their field, very obviously. Yes, they've illegally colonized parts of northeastern Syria and parts of the south and east. They have been stealing, with the help of their proxies, grain and the oil from the northeast of Syria. They have, as Muhammad Ali said, been providing a safe haven for terrorists there and using that as a pretext to stay there. But all they're doing is really delaying the inevitable. You think some lessons would have been learned from Afghanistan, but apparently not. They are going to cause a lot of damage. They want to cause a lot of damage, destabilize Syria as an occupying power. They want to make a fuss about other countries invading other countries. They have been doing it for many, many years in this region. Okay, now before we continue this discussion, let's take a look at some social media reactions uh, to this story. Okay, so we have Tom Fowdy who says, why does nobody ever seem to notice or question that the U.S. literally used the fight against ISIS as a platform to gaining an illegal military occupation in Syria? Remember when Trump said he would withdraw U.S. troops and the neocon establishment went ballistic. Summer Chill says Syria was a beautiful, prosperous, and self-sufficient country before the goddamn U.S. instigated insurgency. Pull out U.S. occupation forces and leave Syria alone if there is the least candidness in your words. And also, a fellow Mana Rocha says, as long as the U.S. is not expelled from Syria and Iraq, Daesh, also known as ISIS, will continue to be active in Syria and Iraq. The U.S. occupation forces will continue to recycle the terrorists that they created 
are trained and armed to destabilize both Syria and Iran. And Sassoon Naimi says the U.S. is literally looting from Syria and allowing for illegal occupation of Syrian Golan Heights by Israel. Now back to back to our correspondent uh, Mohammed Ali. So, uh, do you see any reactions from uh, the Syrian government? Uh, would uh, there be any uh, reaction regarding not uh, respecting the national uh, sovereignty and the territory of uh, Syria? Yes, of course. Uh, since the decision is a new one, uh, there is still no uh, official response. But we're expecting some kind of a statement that may come out from the uh, foreign ministry. Uh, this, uh, such kind of uh, decisions made uh, uh, by uh, the United uh, States uh, or an attack, of course. So we're expecting uh, at any moment a uh, foreign ministry statement to come out or a letter to the UN, a letter of complaint, of course. But a very important thing to say is that all statements by the Syrian uh, officials uh, uh, since the, uh, let's say, uh, 2014, when the United States uh, attacked Syria and the U.S. led coalition started operating in Syria illegally, Officials always stress that this is illegal, it is undermining Syria's sovereignty and independence, and of course uh, it, is, uh, 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 it is against uh, the United Nations uh, uh, charter. Uh, however, what is important also to say is that uh, the uh, uh, officials always uh, stress that all of the attacks of the U.S.-led coalition are in direct support of Daesh. Take, for example, whenever the Syrian army was advancing, uh, fighting against Daesh in the desert, at that time we all we saw like here or there that would uh, not allow the army to advance uh, they're supporting daesh directly over there also uh, if you ask analysts over here they'll tell you that it's not that the united states cannot uh, or is not capable of defeating daesh but it actually doesn't want to because if it does it will lose its pretext that is allowing it to stay inside syria illegally as it's tried trying to portray to the world that what it's doing here is that it's fighting international terrorism but look at all of the attacks of the U.S. coalition. All of them killed civilians, destroyed the infrastructure and public and pri private properties. Look also at the sanctions, uh, the strategy of the United States in Syria, the economic sanctions uh, that have deprived the Syrian, deprived the Syrian uh, people from getting their basic needs, food and oil uh, and medicine. It deprived the Syrian government also and the central bank, for example, from making transactions to import such basic needs for the Syrians. It is giving the oil to the so-called Syrian democratic forces, depriving the rest of Syria uh, from oil. So all of this strategy, all of the practices of the United States in Syria is definitely not in the interest of the Syrian people. It is in the interest of the United States. Okay, and uh, back to Tim Anderson. So we just heard our correspondent uh, elaborate on the situation there. Are you expecting any strong reaction from the United Nations, from the international community? Well, the United Nations Security Council clearly has failed in its role to prevent war because the last eight wars in the West Asian region and North African region have been um, led by three NATO states that are permanent members there. That's why there's a paralysis there. Um, but there are many examples of the US giving direct and, in support, and indirect support to Daesh there. I want to point out one thing, though, that's different to the US colonization of northeast Syria is different to the Turkish colonization of northwest Syria and the Israeli colonization of the Jolan. And that is, I was in uh, Pasake province uh, late last year for a few days. And the Syrian army is all through that region. The Syrian state is all through that region still. Most of the education system is being run by the Syrian state, and some UN agencies are helping them too. So it's a very shallow type of colonization that's going on in the Northeast, and I expect it will collapse very quickly when the US starts to withdraw its forces from Iraq and Northeastern Syria. Thank you very much, Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney. And our very own Muhammad Ali are reporting from Damascus. Thanks to both of you for sharing your thoughts and views with us on this edition of the News Review. And thanks to all of you viewers for following us.